Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Levinson and Associates weekly training webinar. So first off, I hope uh, wherever you are in the country right now that uh, A, you're staying warm and most important that you all are healthy. Um, I wish everyone a great, uh, happy holiday season and hopefully uh, we're coming towards what the end of 2020 starting a, a new year here and hopefully things start to get better around this whole uh, pandemic with this uh, vaccine coming out. So anyway, our best wishes to you all and uh, I really appreciate everybody taking the time today. So let's uh, jump right in. We have some great information to share. We have uh, one of my favorite uh, guest speakers uh, joining us. Mary Reed is on. Uh, we also have John Lovejoy, our VP with LSW, National Life Group. And the reason why we wanted to have this training today is number one, we have some, uh, uh, in fact, a few changes that are uh, coming up in the industry that uh, we're gonna speak about. Um, number two is LSW is one of our top carriers. When you think about living benefits, life insurance with living benefits, when you think about an A plus rated company, when you think about the number one IUL go to in the industry today, LSW is top of mind. So we wanted John to come on. We invited Mary to come on. We have some great, great sales ideas, strategies, all built around living benefits, IUL, permanent life insurance. So I hope everyone is paying attention. Jot down lots of notes, questions, comments. We want to hear from you. We have the little question box in the, uh, it's probably in the left hand bottom corner of your screen. So please use that. Joe will do his best to answer all of you in real time fashion. Whoever we don't get back to, um, we will answer right after we end the webinar. Plus, everyone's going to get a thank you email by the time we wrap up uh, today and we leave the office. Everybody will have this email in their inbox and we'll include all of the information that we are going over today. Okay, if you don't get that email, that means we have your incorrect email address or it's sitting in your spam folder. So please check. And if you don't have it, let us know, call and give us your correct email address if you changed it. Okay, so as you know, it's our job to, to go out and, and find, right, not just great products and carriers, because I feel like most IMOs have great products and carriers, but we also have to get creative and help our agents get their foot in the door, right? And it doesn't matter what the strategy is, you need to have new innovative ideas to share with your prospects and clients so you can make more sales. That's the name of the game. So that's exactly why we invited Mary Reed on the call. And the first one was about, what, two months ago now, is because she is the author of three fantastic books. In fact, we're going to give out her books um, at the end of today's webinar. We're going to ask a question, and whoever answers the question correctly wins this package, okay, on us. So make sure you stay until the end as well. So, but anyway, getting back to my comments here, it's so important that we find what works, what doesn't, and then share it with you all. Okay, and, and some of our agents are literally 18, 19 years old, right out of high school and in college, and then others have been in the business for 60, 70 years, believe it or not, okay? And, and they're on this call too, so we have to cater to everyone. We need a little bit of something for everyone, right? There's different markets. We have some agents working out of their third bedroom or converted garage. We have other agents that are CPAs. We have uh, state planning attorneys that are agents. So we have to cater to everyone and we're constantly out there trying to find the best ideas that will help our agents sell more product so you can help your clients. That's the name of the game. So again, this training is exactly geared towards that concept. You're going to love what you're about to see and hear. Great, great stuff as always. Joe, let's uh, jump right in here. 
And by the way, Joseph Lochran is uh, behind the, the controls here, and you're going to hear from him uh, right after John and Mary speak. So, uh, again, good stuff to come. So getting back to that thought process and our promise to you all is that we have to constantly innovate, right? We can never sit back and just say, oh, my gosh, you know, we had a great day, a great month, a great year. So let's just uh, close down shop and we'll do some end of year planning and uh, we'll come back, you know, January 1st with our foot on the gas. No, 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 no. In fact, every single day, yes, including Saturdays and Sundays, we are out there trying to find the best technology, right, as well. Because let's face it, these days, especially during a pandemic, you are forced to sell from home, over the phone, right? The days of these face-to-face -face, uh, living room meetings, uh, Wednesday night at eight o'clock before the kids go to bed, they're, they're pretty much over, okay? We know that. So you have to get creative. You have to sell over the phone and online, right? You probably heard some new lingo, right? DocuSign, iGo, e-applications, electronic policy delivery. You have to get comfortable very quickly. And hopefully by now, we're almost a year in to this pandemic, you know your way around, right? Just the basics. So anyway, with that said, when you're on the phone and you're talking to a prospect and they're excited, right? You have to strike while the iron is hot. You have to come up with solutions, quotes, illustrations, while the prospect is on the phone quickly. So what we did is we put together two new platforms, okay, with the help of our third-party vendors. These platforms are built with the agent in mind. So while you're working from your third bedroom over the phone, right, you have your headset on, your computer screen's up and running, you're working our $8 final expense leads, you need to know, because let's face it, you're working the senior market, there's going to be some health issues, you need to know where to go, right, what carrier, what product, what health class, and you better come up with a quote quick. Because you don't want to call the client back two, three days later after you hear back from, let's say, the carrier's underwriting team, whatever the case is. So the software on the left side, while you're on the phone, you're working the lead, client says, oh, my gosh, you know, I have high blood pressure. I'm on two medications. Uh, cholesterol's a little high, and I'm 72 pounds overweight. Well, you just enter that in in real-time fashion. You're going to have a product health class quote. You literally hit go. You are done. Give your client all the information and move on to the next sale. On the right side, same exact concept, right? But this is everything to do with annuities. Every single rate rider product carrier is going to be at your fingertips and you can answer these questions intelligently and hopefully make the sale. And by the way, we have e-apps and e-policy delivery with most of these carriers and products. So what that means is in less than 10 minutes, you can literally assess, quote, write the app and move on to the next lead or prospect. Okay. So these are two platforms you can take advantage of for free. As long as you're an active Levinson agent, these tools are 100% free. There's no minimum application count or minimum premium. No. If you're active with Levinson, free. Take advantage, please. Also available on the Levinson mobile app, which is also free. So if you have a smartphone, you better have the Levinson app on your smartphone. Google, Android, iPhones, laptop, iPads, whatever the case is, because what this will allow you to do is let's say you're not in front of your desktop computer. Maybe you're doing a little gardening, the phone rings, you're on your smartphone. You can do the same exact thing right from your five inch screen on your iPhone, okay? Same process from A to Z, less than 10 minutes, right from the Levinson mobile app, free download. I hope you have it on your phone and these tools are available through the app as well. So desktop and mobile app version. Okay, let's move forward, Joan. So real quick, right before we introduce uh, John and Mary, what I wanted to talk about, very exciting stuff here. Um, on the top right side, I did a one-hour podcast number 21 with 
Mary Reed. It was fantastic. Okay, we had some huge sales come out of this. Some new agencies came on board because of this. They love the distribution solution concept. They love Mary Reed. In fact, I'm going to say, I know she's on the phone with us, but I would say this either way. She is one of my, I have about five top presenters, coaches in the industry. She is hands down in the top five. And what I can tell you all is after, you're, well, obviously you're going to listen to her today, but also after you listen to the podcast, I think you will agree with me a hundred percent. I think you're going to love it. We have a bunch of sales ideas, strategies. We mentioned her three books in the bottom right hand corner and one of them, I'm, I'm telling you right now, and it actually has to do with our presentation, how to use the tax code to get the IRS out of your retirement. Okay, great handout. This is a great appointment setter. Um, we have some agents during the holiday time, they give these books out to clients. And they literally say, hey, John, do me a favor. This is on me. Okay, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year. When you're done reading this, let me know what you think. And it literally sets the appointment and sale for you. So you can check these out. They're also available at a discounted price um, through Levinson. So we have a pretty large assortment here. So if you're interested, just let us know. And all of this information is on our website and we will send out a link today. So we make it very, very simple for you all. All right, Joe, let's jump right in here. We're going to introduce our LSW VP, Mr. John Lovejoy, is joining us. John, you there? I am here, Bill. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Well, thank you for your time, and thank you for joining us today. And we would like to plant some seeds and challenge you to, uh, as Bill said, consider some new ideas to help uh, position your sales for 2021. And what I'd like to do before I hand it over to Mary is to basically say to my friends at Levinson, first and foremost, thank you so much, Bill and Joseph. We're having a banner year uh, with Levinson and we love you folks. Uh, we love the, the uh, excitement and enthusiasm and we uh, really appreciate the opportunity to visit with you and your producers today. So thank you so much. Um, I wanted to give you a brief update. You know, this has been a challenging year for all of us. You know, who would have saw this coming 12 months ago? And it's forced each of us to look at how we're doing business and uh, embrace and, and quickly get our arms and our heads around new ways of doing business. And so uh, what I want to share with you is, even though it's been a difficult year, our life submit is up 33% this year. Our flex annuity is up 35% this year. Our single premium deferred annuities are up 29% this year. And the reason I want to share those numbers for our region is number one, thank you. But number two, people are making buying decisions each and every day. And there's opportunities to cross sell and I want to encourage you to keep making those phone calls. We're in a tough time. We're in a tough business. But to pick up the phone each and every day and to, to say, Bill, may I have a few minutes to visit with you to talk about policy review, maybe taking a look at converting that term insurance and, uh, you know, just basically initiating uh, uh, opportunities to have conversations around people that will turn into buying decisions. And sadly, we know that uh, there are people coming down with this virus and we're still writing life business. So, you know, we want you to know that uh, we're open for business. And the only uh, changes that we've made have been improvements into our portfolio and, and uh, our ease of doing business. But I want to remind you, we have a full menu of products. We have not scaled back at all in any of the por product ports uh, in our portfolio. We offer term. We are for universal life. Uh, we are big into IUL, indexed universal life. But I want to remind you also, we've got a, a, a very competitive whole life product. And it's also included with living benefits, as all of our products are. So we have four, the four main core products, all with the living benefits story. 
So we haven't changed anything with the uh, availability of the products that we're offering. Our process continues to improve throughout this year, and uh, uh, whether it's e-application and, and then combining that with our non-med, I want to remind you, if you're new to us, we're going zero to age 50, up to $3 million with no blood exam or fluids. Ages 51 to 60, we'll go up to a uh, $1 million dollars. And up to uh, age 61 to 65, we'll go up to 250,000. And that's on our permanent products. Uh, and on term insurance, we'll go up to 2 million, a little bit different on the term. So up to 3 million for permanent, no blood exam or fluid up to age 50, but term will go up to 2 million. So I wanna remind you on that. So we've got the full story, our, our timeline from submission to commission has never been better. It's never been stronger. So if uh, you've got a chance to get a case in, you know, this is the time to get your business pushed through underwriting. And uh, so I want to encourage you, try to get your apps in, and we'll do our best to get you a decision very, very quickly. So I want to thank you for your business. I want to thank you for the opportunity to, to uh, uh, visit with you today. But I also want to encourage you as you reflect uh, on where you've been and where you're going for next year, I'd really like you to challenge yourself to learn one new business concept next year. Uh, I've been doing a field, uh, field guy for 40 years, and uh, I can't tell you the number of times that I've seen an agent learn a new advanced sales concept that turns into a career-making case. And I couldn't be more pleased to be handing it over to Mary Reed because Mary is here to share some of those ideas with you today. But Maybe it's time to take uh, a look at some of the advanced sales concepts and let's have a conversation. I'd love to line up a call with you and our advanced sales team. We'll help you. We'll coach you. We'll give you the talking points. We'll help you get what you need to feel confident learning a new advanced sales concept that could turn into a career making case for you in 2021. So with that, I'd like to now turn it over to Mary Reed, our National Director of, of Pension and uh, Protection Planning. Mary, thank you so much for this time uh, visiting with us again today. So I'll turn it over to you, Mary. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, John, and, and again, welcome to everybody. Um, and thank you, Bill, for that wonderful buildup. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on now that I better do a good job. Um, <laughs> but hopefully you, you will find this useful. Um, we're going to dig into kind of the, the meat of the matter now, and I want to talk about um, some of the sales opportunities. Everything I do has to do with qualified plans. So we're going to talk about qualified money here um, and kind of some of the things that have been going on and some of the opportunities that that has created. And uh, as Bill said, the title here, How to Keep the IRS Out of Your Retirement, um, that is really what we can help people do, and most people would like to get the IRS out of their retirement. So let's talk, we're gonna talk from a legislative. There's been a lot of legislation going on in the last few years, um, and a lot of it has affected qualified plans. So the most recent one we have is the SECURE Act. Um, this call created uh, some really significant changes, and we're going to dig into depth in this one. This is the one everybody knows, you know, it pushed back the required minimum distribution age from age 70 and a half to age 72. Um, uh, but it also did a bunch of other things. Most critically, it eliminated the stretch IRA. Um, so it also has some other impact in qualified plans. So we will dig into this a little bit deeper as we go along. Um, but just remember, three months after that was passed, we had the CARES Act that passed. So the CARES Act, as we all know, was a response to, uh, to COVID. Um, and basically, it made it easier for people to get at some of their qualified money. But there are a lot of rules wrapped around that. But it was mostly about easing access to money that people have accumulated. Most of you probably don't know the statistic. Right now, there is almost $32 trillion sitting in qualified accounts in this country. Think about that. That's a huge amount of money. The IRS would love to get their tax revenue off of that money, and that drives some of the activity. Um, but also, that tells us a lot of people have money sitting in those accounts. And let's not forget, before all those happened, we had the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, right? This was the one that lowered the federal tax rates, right, from the maximum of 39.6 down to 37. Did I just lose my screen? It just went back. Um, back to uh, 37. This will sunset 
January 1 of 2026. So regardless of what else happens, we know that the tax rates will bump back up in 2026. And who knows after that uh, what might happen. But there were also other changes in the Tax Cut and Jobs Act that really affected closely held businesses. Hey, Mary. So let's I'm start sorry. there. Yes. Mar Mary, can you uh, hit the share your screen button? I think it went okay. out. No, we got to put it back on there. Okay, I have to get. Hang on, hang on. Yep, it's okay. No problem. Well, I can't even see it. It's not even on my screen. Why are you not here? Why are you not here? Oh, because I probably have to expand this. Hold on. It's okay. Take your time. Let's see. Show screen. Come on, give me the screen. Why don't you want to let anybody see my screen? <laughs> hey, Joe, are you on? Yep, let me um, try it one more time here. Let's take yeah, because I'm clicking on the show screen, but it's not. Okay, there should be something. It worked fine up. before when we said, ah, there, it's back now. It just came back. Can you see it? It's still not. Yes, I know it stopped. It's saying it's showing. That's really odd. You can't see it, right? No. No, it's not. It's not showing. Uh, Joe, is everything fine on your end? Yep. Um, I can actually uh, try to pull them up here. Give me one second. We do have backup if we can't get this to work. Yes. Yeah, I don't know why. Been... I'm clicking on the on the access, but it's not, and it's saying it's sharing, but obviously it's not doing it. Okay. Just give us one second. Joe will get this loaded. There's been a lot of issues with uh, GoToMeeting software and glitches, and so we've had a little uh, a little bit of a problem with this. But I think we are good now. Is this the right slide? Uh, three months later. Uh, yes. Um, yes. Yes. Actually, we'll go to the next slide. Okay. Perfect. Sorry about that, everybody, but we're back on here. All right. Well, well, good thing we have the backup. Hopefully, this will keep working. Sorry, sorry about the, those glitches. I think there's just too many people on on these sites these days, and they're overloading. Um, okay. So back into the content here. So let's talk about the tax cut and jobs act. Let's go to the next slide. All right. So as we said, this is the one that lowered the tax rates. Um, it lowered them a little bit. It also changed the brackets a little bit. Um, I think if you do a second click, you'll bring the uh, married filing jointly table will come up on the screen. There we go. So, um, but these will be sunsetting in, in, in 2026. It's, um, at least for me, it's a good idea to keep an eye on that horizon. Um, because as we're planning for people to kind of have a grasp of which tax rates they're actually going to be in, that we know can't account for what we don't know might happen, but this is what we do know. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, so here's the big factor of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act for the closely held businesses. You know, that was the act that lowered the corporate rate very low, but in, in our world, certainly in my world, and I'm guessing in most of the people who are on this meeting too, business owners that you're dealing with are closely held businesses. Um, they're not big C corporations. So for anybody other than a C corporation, anybody that is a pass-through entity, um, they just went to the 37% instead of 39.6. They didn't get that big uh, cut. So we, hence we got 199A. They added section 199A in that act. And what that, what 199A said is that if you are a pass-through entity, a pass-through entity, you get a 20% deduction of your qualified business income. That was kind of a compensation for not getting the lower tax rate. However, if you are in one of the specified service businesses, you can lose that deduction. So let's go to the next slide and look at who those companies are. It's pretty much anybody you would think of as a service business. So um, basically anybody where service is the primary thing that they're delivering. Doctors, attorneys, accounts, actuaries, consultants. Uh, they also include a performing artist, professional athletes. So if you're not a manufacturing company, but you're providing service to someone, you uh, can lose this 20% deduction if your income is over certain thresholds. Now they did exclude engineers, architects, and then in a subsequent change, they excluded real estate professionals from this definition. So they get to keep their 20%, but all the other, uh, 
pastoral entities that are service businesses could lose the 20 percent so let's go to the next slide it will show us you know you're only going to lose it if your income is over the threshold now the definition here of income is total household income not just the business income so for singles they will lose that deduction if they earn more than two hundred ten thousand seven hundred dollars that was the 2019 number they do adjust this number every year with cost of living um, I'm not sure what it is for 2020. Married is 421,400. So if you think about it, you have a married couple and you have someone who owns a business and their pass-through income is 200,000. So far, so good. But they're married to someone who makes 250,000. Now their income is 450,000 and they're over the threshold and they lose this 20%. So when this was first passed, I had a lot of calls from business owners um, who were over the thresholds looking for deductions to get themselves back under the threshold. We can do that with a qualified plan. So let's go to the next slide. So here is, this is a real client of mine, um, but this is what we were doing for businesses. This was a couple who came to me, um, they're in the real estate business. Um, they own properties, but they had $700,000 of income after their expenses, $700,000 of taxable income. Now, this couple didn't really need that income. They have lots of other income. They're very wealthy. Um, and their tax bill that they were looking at, you can see in this first column, was $250,120. They did not get the 20% deduction because clearly their income was over the threshold. They wanted to see if we could get their income down and get them that deduction back. So we gave them a fully insured defined benefit plan, a 412E3 plan, annuity only, this plan doesn't have any life insurance, and we'll get to the reason why in a little while, but that gave them a $405,000 contribution. So that's a fully deductible contribution, which brought their taxable income down to $295,000. That put them below the threshold. They got their 20% deduction of $59,000. They also, have, of course, had the standard deduction. Now their tax bill dropped to $50,880. By putting in this plan for them, we got their tax bill down just about $200,000. And where did the money they were contributing go? It's going to the two of them. They have no employees. They're getting all the money. They're just recharacterizing it as earnings to a qualified plan contribution. Now, their plan is to do this for five years. Um, so at a, at a little over $199,000 in tax savings every year, in that five years, we'll save them about $996,000 in taxes. They will have accumulated lump sums in there equal between the two of them a little over $2 million. Hang into the presentation because when we get to the second half of the presentation, I'm going to show you how that money will come out. All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, so let's just talk what is a 412 plan for those of you who out there might not write qualified plans. Um, this is a defined benefit plan. This has been around since the 1930s. And what's special about a 412E3 plan is that the money can only be deposited in level premium annuity contracts. You can have life insurance in the plan. If you do, it can only be whole life. And the two products must be from the same company. Right now, there are only four insurance companies in this space in the market. National Life is one of them. Uh, they're also one that's been in for probably the longest period of time, so they are very good at it. They actually have the systems and everything to back it up, so they're a good company to write these with. The advantage for the client here is they can put in very large sums. You saw my couple put in $400,000, um, all deductible, and everything is guaranteed, so it takes market risk out of the picture. Let's go to the next slide. All right, now here's comparing a 412E3 to a traditional defined benefit plan. In both plans, they're both defined benefit plans, we could have the same benefit eventually at retirement. The question is, how are we going to get there? In a traditional defined benefit plan, basically the money in that plan that's funding the benefit can be invested in anything that the client wants. You know, typically a, a spread of risk ac across market investments. As I said, the 412 has to be in the guaranteed product. So this is a sample, this is a, a, 50, a 52 year old. If they had done this plan 10 years ago, I went back and compared the actual results of the market to the actual results of the annuity, this is a national life annuity that would have been used to fund this plan. Based upon the actual results, what, if, what would have happened to the contributions to this plan? 
And you can see here, the goal here was for this client to have a $200,000 contribution. If you look at the fully insured column on the right, you'll see the contribution every year is ranging from 218,000, goes down to 208, at one point 203, and then up to 221. So it's staying right in that low 200 corridor. This is the blue line on the graph on the left. If they had done this as a traditional defined benefit plan and got the results that the market showed, look at their pattern of contributions. It is all over the place. One year it's as low as zero, one year it's as high as $300,000. And these are the contributions they would have had to have made. So if you're the employer here, you, you don't really have a very predictable future in the traditional plan. And what happens is the numbers you see the zero, like in year seven there, the reason that the contribution number is zero is because the investments did well. They made lots of money, so we didn't have to put any more money in the plan. When the numbers are high, year nine, that means we had a crash in the market and the market went down and we have to make up for that loss. And so the pattern of contributions tends to run contrary of what the employer wants. You know, in a good year, they want to contribute more, not less. And in a bad year, they want to contribute less, not more. And in the traditional defined benefit plan, the actual opposite of that can happen. Whereas the 412 stays nice and steady and predictable. You know, that's the difference of having risk in the plan and having no risk. Remember, they're going to end up with the same benefit at the end of the day. All right, let's go to the next slide. Here's a little example just to give you an idea how numbers might play out. Here we have a typical little company. We have a, a couple who owns this company and then one employee. If we did this plan just with annuity, you can see we're looking at a $555,000 contribution. Now think about this in the real world. This, this kind of company typically, um, if they had any plan in place, it probably would have been set up by their CPA and as odds are it would be a set. Um, where they can only put in 57,000 each. Um, maybe it would be a simple, which would give them even less. Maybe they would have gone to a 401k and gotten their $57,000, and actually they could each do their $6,500 additional catch-up in there, but it's a long cry from $555,000. We can only get that kind of contribution in a defined benefit plan. If we add insurance to this plan, you can see the death benefit there, $3.9 million on Pat and four, almost 4.8 on Chris. This is whole life insurance. Um, this brings the plan contribution up to $723,000. Now that is a lot of money. This business owner has to have the cash flow to be able to do that. But even today, I'm doing these plans for businesses. There are businesses out there still making money and cash flow. Granted, there are businesses who are in very poor straits, and I feel very bad for those people, um, but there are businesses that are pulling in money. Um, and maybe they're looking for this deduction. Think about if they had $100,000 of income, uh, I'm sorry, a million dollars of income before we got here, give them a $723,000 deduction. We just got them their 199A, 20% deduction back as well. So let's go to the next page. Now, what did that insurance really cost? When we added the insurance to the plan, it took that contribution from 555,000 to the 723,000, so it increased it to $168,134. That is all deductible as plan contribution. So I'm using a very low, I think I'm using a 21% corporate rate here to be ultra conservative. Um, their net out of pocket cost to actually add the insurance is about $132,000. Look at the premium. The premiums are $333,000. I cannot name one other place where I can pay $333,000 of premium for $132,000. There isn't. So if this person needs this coverage, whether they want to run into the max, so we could always cut it back if they don't need that much, this is a very cost-effective place to pay for it. And the pure death benefit is still income tax free. Next slide. All right, so as I said, the death benefit, if they were to die while the insurance was in the plan, a lot of people think because the premium was deductible that the death benefit will be taxable. It's not. The cash value buildup in the policy is taxable because that's considered cash in the eyes of the IRS. But the pure death benefit the difference between the face amount and the cash value is income tax free. Next slide.
Okay, so we're going to cover a lot of ground here, and I know we're going to go pretty quickly. Um, but you'll have these slides afterwards if you want to study the detail, um, because I really want to focus. I want to give you this information because uh, it's current and, and it's good to know. Um, but I really want to spend the bulk of the, our time that we have like, talking about what the opportunities are. So, um, so here's the CARES Act, right? When we had the CARES Act, as I said, this was mostly the pension provisions here were to give people access to their money. Um, made changes to the required uh, distributions and also the loan rules. Um, so we'll, let, we'll take a quick walk through some of these changes so you'll have some of this detail and you can always look at it um, at your leisure because I don't expect anybody to memorize it as we go through. Um, so let's go to the next slide. All right, waiver of the 10% early withdrawal penalty. As you know, if you have money in a qualified plan and you take it under age 59 and a half, unless you're spreading it over your lifetime, you will pay a 10% penalty. So there were provisions here to waive that penalty to give people access to that money in 2020, um, up to $100,000. Um, so while there's not a sale here, I think these are good things to know because you may have clients um, who are in some difficult situations who may not be aware of some of these rules that may make things uh, make life a little bit easier for them. Next slide. All right, so it waives the requirements. This is a confusing one for required minimum distributions. They were waived for 2020. Uh, for 2020. Um, there were some people who got caught in the middle here, and there's some of the nuances, the roles. Well, what if I had already turned 70 and a half, right? Because they pushed the age back to 72. That's pretty easy. But what if I had already turned 70 and a half, and I was supposed to take my RMP? Well, if you had already taken it in 2019, it's kind of, all right, you did, you did. But if you, were, you had waited until 2020, you got some relief. Um, if you hadn't turned uh, 70 and a half yet, now you're under the new age 72 rule, so you have time yet to wait. Um, the rules are a little different for IRAs and qualified plans, um, like 401ks, but it did not apply to defined benefit plans. They carved that out. Um, so if you have someone who's in a defined benefit plan and they, uh, you know, and they hit the required minimum distribution age, COVID or no COVID, they had to take it. All right, next slide. This is a weird one. They they um, they loosened up the loan rules under a qualified plan. Typically, you can only take fifty thousand. They opened it up to be a hundred thousand, but they only opened the door for one hundred and eighty days after they passed the rule. So those those hundred and eighty days have closed. I'm not sure what that was all about. Um, so you may have gotten clients who who got in there under the wire. Otherwise, um, we're pretty much past that deadline. But it was there, and there was some leniency on repaying the loans. Next slide. Um, distributions again, this hundred thousand. Um, but again, uh, this this is a different one. This is not the loan. This is actually distributions. People could actually take money out of their accounts up to a hundred thousand dollars, so long as they took it. They take it during 2020. They don't have to pay the tax on that distribution for three years. Um, also, if they're under 59 and a half, there will be no 10 percent penalty. Um, and if they are able to repay over the next three years and they have the money back, they could actually roll it back into the qualified account and not have to pay the tax. Um, so this was a nice leniency move for people to access up to $100,000. And this is still out. The door is still open on this one. Next slide. Uh, if you have clients with defined benefit plans, they did give some relief on the funding, giving people until 2021 for a contribution that otherwise would have been due in 2020. It's not a complete uh, escape though. You still have to make the contribution and make up the interest uh, for the time lost. Um, but it, it is uh, giving uh, some reprieve to those people who have to make those contributions. Next slide. All right, so that was the CARES Act. And now let's dig into the SECURE Act because this is the one that at least affects clients that I work with. So, um, so there are three provisions here that I really want to talk about. Some of them I don't care so much about, and you probably don't care as either. So let's go through them one by one. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so this is one nobody knows about, but it's nice to know. Um, I'm putting in plans right now, despite everything that's going on. I am very busy right now installing qualified plans for companies, new plans. Um, you can any new company who sets up a new qualified plan, if it's the first time they've ever had a qualified plan, 
The expenses to set up and operate that plan are a deductible business expense, but they're also eligible for this credit. Um, and the credit uh, has been around for a while. You can get a credit, it used to be up to $500 towards, for your expenses in the first three years of the plan. They now expanded that um, to make it the greater of that or $250 times the number of non-highly compensated employees to a maximum of $5,000. So a lot of people are unaware of this, small businesses. Sometimes this credit can go a long way towards offsetting their expense to set up the plan because, um, you know, it's a little bit of a hurdle in the way when they find out they have to spend, I don't know, $1,000 or $1,200 as, as an installation fee. This can help to offset that cost a little bit. So it's nice of them to open it up and make it more generous. Next slide. Safe Harbor. Um, they freed up, if any of you, to Safe Harbor plans. They gave a new option on Safe Harbor plans. Up until now, the employer always had to decide before the year started whether the plan would be Safe Harbor. They've now opened the door for that employer to decide if they want to be Safe Harbor up until November of the plan year. Um, there are some rules about what they'll have to do. They'll have to make a 4% non-elective contribution. Um, we don't have enough time today to dig into all the rules surrounding it, but this can be a safety valve um, for employers who have a 401k plan that may find that they're failing their ADP test or the plan has become top heavy, which creates another expense for them. So it's a, it's a nice, again, a nice to let off the pressure that employers now have this option. Next slide. This is one people are really talking about. Um, up until now, in any qualified plan, basically you can have a requirement for eligibility that someone has to work a year, and in that year they have to work a thousand hours. And if they never work a thousand hours, they'll never come into the plan. This new rule was passed as part of the SECURE Act that part-time employees will now have to be let in. This is only for 401k plans. And the rule is uh, they created this new category of long-time part-time workers. If a worker works more than 500 hours, doesn't have to be 1,000, just more than 500, and is there three years in a row, they have to be let into the 401k plan. Under the old rules, they would never come in. Now, they only have to be let in to do salary deferrals. The employer does not have to make a contribution for them, um, but they will pick up the expense. Usually there's a headcount fee for operating a 401k plan, so it'll add a little expense there, even though they're not contributing for them. Um, the trail challenge on this one for a lot of employers is just keeping track, um, and administrators too. And you think about companies like landscaping companies, which have seasonal employees. That's who this is really going to affect. Those employees, they come and go as the seasons change, um, but maybe they're there in the spring and summer and they work over 500 hours and then they leave. Well, if those same employees come back year after year, they will find their way into the 401k plan. Next slide. Okay, this is a big one that nobody seems to know about in the qualified plan world, including CPAs. Um, up until this year to adopt a qualified plan, you had to adopt that plan by the last day of your fiscal year. For most businesses, that will be December 31. Adopting the plan means you need to sign that plan document by December 31. You have time to, to fund it, but you have to sign your plan document. For the first year ever, that rule has been changed. Employers can now adopt a plan up until they file their tax return, including extensions. So under the previous rules, we were always wrestling, you'd have employers who might not know their profitability until after December 31, until they do their taxes. And by the time they would sit down and do their taxes with their CPA, all they could put in was a theft. Well, now they could be on that same time schedule and doing their taxes with their CPA, and maybe it's, maybe it's April, or maybe it's March, or maybe it's September. Um, they could still put in a qualified plan um, if they find that they have the need and the desire to do that. So this is a big change in the qualified plan world. Um, I am finding, because we're in December here, there are a lot of people who don't know about this rule, including CPAs. Um, I'm still working under deadlines that people want the plans in by December 31, um, even though we've told them they have a little extra time, but we still don't want everybody to procrastinate. But this means you can be a hero to clients. If they're doing their taxes and it's March or April, and now they're realizing they're going to have this big tax bill, 
um, their CPA may even be telling them it's too late to do anything. You can come in as the hero here and say, no, we can still set up a plan for you for 2020. Next slide. Um, okay, MEPS and PEPS, I'm not gonna talk about these at all. We could spend three hours just talking about these. These are group plans where multiple employers can be in the same plan. They have really made a lot of progress here with the rules and opening the doors. Um, we'll see how this plays out, but what this offers is an opportunity for smaller companies to band together into a common 401k plan to get their expenses down in the operating and participation of that plan. So a lot of this is, will be new and we'll be seeing things unfold as to how this plays out in terms of pricing. Um, but that's the idea here. And we'll see, I think, a lot unfold with this over the next two or three years. Next slide. R&D already talked about, right? They increased that to age 72. Everybody pretty, knows that, pretty much knows that one. So let's go to the next slide. All right, so this is where it gets interesting, and this is my favorite part, um, because this is where they took away the stretch IRA. The rule was changed. The old rule used to be when you had a qualified account, you passed away, it goes to your beneficiary. Um, let's say it goes to your child. That child could spread that account out over their lifetime and let it keep growing over their lifetime and just take required minimum amounts out each year. So if you had a child who's, I don't know, 20, in their 20s or 30, it might, you might be looking at 60 years for that account to continue to grow tax deferred with just minimums coming out. Well, the IRS said, we want our tax revenue, so we're going to change that rule. So now when that account goes to a beneficiary, it has to be liquidated in 10 years. That's it, 10 years. Um, so this creates a tremendous amount of tax risk um, that's increased by market risk when that happens. So this is the one we're gonna dig into uh, a little bit deeper. Um, I know, I think we're running a little bit over time, but hopefully everybody will hang in because um, this is where it really gets interesting. So let's go to the next slide. All right, so there are some exceptions to this 10 year rule. Spouses, this rule for spouses didn't change. A surviving spouse can inherit their spouse's account and make it their own. RMDs will be based upon when they turn 72. But once we get past the spouse, these new rules do apply. Um, minor children who uh, uh, are exempt from the 10-year requirement until they reach the age of majority, and then it starts, the clock starts ticking. Disabled, uh, disabled beneficiary can still stretch it out over their lifetime. And also beneficiaries not more than 10 years younger than the account owner. Anybody other than that will be under the 10-year rule. Next slide, please. All right, so, um, so this is for anybody who passed away after December 31. So, you know, it's been a while now. So let's go to the next slide. All right, so here's the problem. Here's someone with this account. They have a statement. I'm using a million dollars here in my sample. So they bring a statement. You ask them, how much do you have in your IRA? And they say a million dollars. They bring you a statement. It says a million dollars. But they don't really have a million dollars because the, IRA is, the IRS is waiting there for their taxes as soon as every dollar comes out of that plan. Um, here I'm using maximum federal and actually I'm using North Carolina, they're a good middle of the road um, state tax, um, about 5%. So this person, they really, the IRS has a $422,500 tax lien on that money. So while their statement says a million dollars, they really have 577, 500. They would like to have more of that, and we have a strategy to help them get more of that and, get the, and give the IRS less. Let's get the IRS out of your retirement so you get to hold on to more. All right, let's go to the next slide. So remember, we have required minimum distributions taken at age 72, and now for beneficiaries, that money, when they inherit account, will have to come out within 10 years. So let's talk about the market risk on that money for a minute. On the left here, I have the RMD table. I just have it in five-year increments instead of the whole table. But basically, if you look at age 72, we take the RMD factor that's on the IRS table. I just translated that into percentage. When you're 72, you have to withdraw 3.91% of your account. That percentage climbs the older you get because the table is designed to empty your account at your life expectancy. Um, so the column next to that is if I have to withdraw 3.91%, and I don't want to eat away at my principal because I don't want to run out of money or I want to give it to somebody. 
what do I have to return, earn on what's left to earn back what I just took out? If I took out 3.91%, I have to earn 4.07. And you see those percentages climb over time as you have to pull out a greater percentage. So what that tells us, if that is an objective of the client, it puts them into the stock market. You can't earn those rates of return sitting in treasuries or a, or a CD or a money market. You're going to have to be in the market, and along with that comes risk. On the right side, you see the drops that we've seen historically in the market. These are the real numbers on the S&P 500 from the peak to the trough. How much was the drop? These are very large numbers. Now overlay this with time horizons. You know, if I'm taking my RMDs and the market just drops 62%, it doesn't matter. I have to take the money out anyway. I can't sit there and let it recover. If I inherited the account and the market drops 62%, well, I can wait 10 years and see if it recovers. But once that 10 year uh, time comes, I have to take the money out no matter where the market is. So that just increases the risk on this money. Let's go to the next slide. Here's putting it in graph form. We look back to 1900 to the S&P 500. You can see the span of time when the market went from peak to trough. How long did it take to recover? 16 years, 23 years, 29 years, 26 years. So think about that inherited account who only has 10 years before they have to liquidate the account. If they were at the beginning of the cycle, they're never going to recover before they have to liquidate that account. That is a very large risk and a real risk. Next slide. So we have a solution for them. And I'm going to show you that now. We're going to a different to a different solution. It will reduce the tax bill, but it will also reduce a lot of that market risk. It will also move the money out of that RMD requirement and also eliminate that 10-year rule for the beneficiary. So let's look at the sample and show you how that how this can play out for a client. Let's go to the next slide. All right, this is the structure. I'm not going to go into detail, but basically we're going to take somebody's qualified money, roll it into a qualified plan. We will always do this in a 401k or profit sharing plan. We can create that plan for the client. And in there, we're going to shift the money into a life insurance policy, typically over five years. And at the end of that period, we will distribute that policy to the client because it's now fully paid for. And we will get a reduction in the taxable amount because Distributions are always taxed at ordinary income, but the question is the value that they assess that tax on. There is a special rule for life insurance, and only life insurance gets this rule, that under it's taxed on its market value, not the money we put into it. So with the right policy, that can help us reduce what the tax bill will be applied to. So let's go to the next slide. Here's, I have a sample here with a million dollars, a 55-year-old with a million dollars, currently sitting in a, in a 401k, let's say. It'll ultimately get to an IRA. If they just let it sit there, and I'm assuming it compounds at 4% annually, the orange bar represents the total taxes at each of these ages. If they live to age 90, they'd have to take their RMDs from age 72. I add up the taxes on those RMDs. And plus the tax that would be due on the remaining balance if they died at age 90, and the tax bill on that account has become $1,355,000. If we do the life insurance strategy instead, their tax bill is $365,000. We have effectively saved them a million dollars in taxes with this strategy compared to doing nothing looking out to age 90. Next slide. Now, if they didn't leave the money that in, in the qualified account, they could do a Roth conversion. I've had a lot of conversations with people about Roth conversion. When you convert to a Roth, you pay tax on the full amount you converted. In this instance, it'd be $514,000 that would be paid in tax on the million dollars. If we did the insurance, right, I'm growing the Roth for five years to show the tax in the same year I pay the insurance tax. On the policy, the taxable value on the IRS rule is 864,000, so my tax bill is only $365,391. So I've eliminated $148,000 of tax. I have done the similar thing that the Roth has done. I've gone from a highly taxable asset to a tax-free asset, but by doing it with a life insurance, I've gotten a discount on the tax along the way. Next slide, please. 
All right, so let's look at the benefit side of the equation. We know we can save taxes, but on the benefit side, remember this is a 55-year-old with a million dollars. The purple column is the pure death benefit of this life insurance policy. So if they did this, and they didn't need the money and just wanted the legacy to go to their beneficiary, there are the amounts tax-free. If they wanted to use this for income for themselves, I ran the policy starting income at age 65, taking an annual income, these are loans from the policy, every year for this person's 100, they could pull out just under $90,000 a year, just a little over that, tax-free every year. There's always some death benefit. So in this blue column, these numbers are the total of the income taken plus the death benefit if they died at each of these ages. So if we look at age 90 again, we add up that income every year since age 65, plus what the death benefit would be to go to the beneficiary, and the contract is paid $2,796,000 tax-free. The third column is the traditional IRA. If I take that million dollars and I grow it at my 4%, and then I start at age 65 taking that 90,000 out, after tax, I have to gross it up to pay the tax and net the same 90. Before I even get to age 75, I have emptied the account. The account paid $754,974 and ran out of money. The green column is the Roth conversion. I do the conversion to take the same income, but now I can take a tax free there as well, just like the life insurance. But now by the time I get to age 85, I've pulled out 1.8 million way better than the traditional IRA, but again, I have run out of money, whereas the insurance keeps going. That's if we didn't lose any money in the investments. Now, the second set of columns is the same assumptions, but what if I just had three times the market went down 10% in the whole life of this, from age 55 to age 100? If it went down three times, I spread them out 15 years apart, the insurance doesn't go down. It's an index universal life policy with a floor of zero. You don't lose money. But if you're in the IRAs and you're in the market, you do. And those numbers just get worse. Is that really a risk that you want to hold on to when you're 65, 70, 75? I mean, you either need this money for your income or you want to give it to somebody. Next slide, please. It also has living benefits in this policy, so it can serve multiple needs. Here's just a cost of what long, an estimate of what long-term might co cost for someone in, in North Carolina. But there are living benefits on the policy that can meet these needs as well, and they're just included as a kind of a bonus in the policy. Obviously, if they stay in the IRA, they do not have these benefits. Next slide. All right, so by doing this strategy, instead of leaving the money in the IRA, whether it be traditional or Roth, we are saving taxes for the client. We're giving them peace of mind by reducing the market risk on that money. We're giving them flexibility and giving them back control of their money because it's no longer subject to those RMDs at 872. And the legacy is back on their terms because now it's not a matter of money going to their beneficiary and them having to empty the account in 10 years. They can use the money when they want how they want, and we're adding protection with the living benefits. Next slide, please. All right, now remember my little clients uh, that we showed in way back in the beginning with the 199A, right? They saved their tax dollars and they had their $2 million that we saved them almost a million dollars in taxes and they've accumulated $2,068,000. Now, what the plan is for this client, they're in year three of this program, by the way, we did not buy insurance in this 412 plan because we're going to use that distribution strategy to get the money out. So let's go to the next slide. Right, so we take that 2 million, uh, uh, they contributed 2,025,000, we saved them 996,200 in taxes. They have a lump sum of 2,068,000. We roll that into a 401k plan and we're going to buy insurance with that money and pay for it over five years. But these rules allow us to buy insurance on anybody they have an insurable interest in besides themselves. So in this case, we're buying the insurance on their two children because the parents don't need the money. The children will not need the money either. It buys $23 million of death benefit between the two children. Now, we will pay for this policy over the five years with this $2,068,000. At the end of the five years, we distribute it. That taxable value under that IRS rule will be $1,426,000.
So the tax bill will be $570,000 that they will have to pay. Now remember, we saved them $996,000 in taxes putting this money in. We pay 570,000 taxes on the way out. So overall, we have saved them $425,000 in taxes. And for this couple, they don't anticipate that their children will ever need the money. So this just created a legacy for their grandchildren. If each of these children who are the insurers actually lives to age 80 and dies, it will generate $48 million of death benefit to their grandchildren, tax-free, courtesy of grandma and grandpa, who we save $425,000 of taxes for. Next slide, please. I'm gonna show you one other one, just to kind of get the numbers. Uh, not everybody's that wealthy. This is another client we just did. Um, this client is 64, has $1.2 million sitting in an IRA. He has four children. So we divided the money between the four children. So go to the next slide, please. This is a 27-year-old child. Now, we did all four children, but this is just one of them. But I want to show you something else that happened. The right side of the equation here, if we left that $30,000 under where it says qualified money there in his IRA and we grow it and then it gets to age 72 and he has to take those required minimum distributions. The first band of red there at age 84, we assume he dies at the end of that year. He dies at age 85, so the RMB stops. His son then inherits what's left of the account, $427,000, lets it grow for 10 years and then has to empty it out, pay the tax. The son ends up inheriting after tax 417 thousand dollars the so five hundred ninety three thousand to the right there is the total paid if we add up the rmds as well that dad got but the son's going to inherit four hundred seventeen thousand dollars instead we took that three hundred thousand dollars and are buying insurance on the son it buys initially a death benefit of two million eight hundred fifty thousand dollars we pay for that policy we will get the tax savings the distribution Dad owns the policy, so if he needs this cash, he has access and he could take loans from the policy. He doesn't anticipate needing it, so if he doesn't need it, the cash value will just keep growing. And now if we look at the same time horizon, you know, when he dies there at age 84, we have cash surrender value in this policy of $589,000 and a $2.8 million death benefit. If we look at the same 10-year horizon that the son would have had to have emptied the inherited IRA and received $417,000. The cash value of the policy is $1,081,000. Now, if this son doesn't need the life insurance and doesn't care about the death benefit, he can pull all this cash out tax-free, and now he inherited a million instead of $417,000. If he wants to keep the policy in force, it's his choice, take some money, use it as he wishes, Whatever death benefit is still there will go to his beneficiary. And again, we've created a legacy potentially for the grandchildren. It's a very, very powerful tool compared to leaving the money in a qualified account where it is very heavy tax laden and there are a lot of control rules about how and when to distribute the money. Next slide, please. All right, so that was a huge amount of information I know. Um, but to just kind of wrap up, there are lots of opportunities out there. There have been all these legislative changes, um, you know, some not so good things have happened, but some good things have happened that create opportunities for us. Whether it's putting in a qualified plan to get a deduction for that past year business who wants to get their taxable income down, or for someone who's accumulated, um, you know, who has one of these $32 trillion, um, has an account with significant dollars in it that are qualified to help them better position that money so it can really work to its maximum for them and we can get the IRS out of there um, and let them use the money how they want, when they want, and get that tax bill down. So I know we ran a little bit long and I apologize that, but thank you everybody for your attention. Mary, that was excellent. And let, let me just tell everyone, first off, and most important, you, you saw, yes, a lot of information, a lot of content, some great ideas. Mary is also available to work with you. If you have a, a good prospect, maybe even a team of uh, CPAs and 
they have some good clients, whatever the case is, she is available. She'll jump on a call or webinar with you and the client. So if you're interested in that, obviously you do have to be appointed with us and LSW, but we can make the introduction, no problem at all, okay? Most of the big cases we're seeing were done exactly like I just said. So that was awesome, Mary, thank you. And I apologize to everyone for the uh, little technical issue we had there. So uh, I apologize for that. And we have a couple more things. We're gonna end in like three to four minutes. Um, just some, some important slides I wanna touch on quickly. If you want to hear more, because yes, we did go kind of quick through a lot of slides, check out the one hour podcast that was 21. Um, we're gonna send that out in the thank you email or uh, any of your favorite podcast channels on YouTube, on our Facebook page. If you leave a comment, I'll send you one of uh, Mary's books uh, on us, okay? No problem. Joe, let's move forward. I want Joe to share real quick um, some of the other IUL strategies and some of the value add platforms that are available to Levinson agents at no charge. Joe? Yep, thanks, Bill. <clears throat> so we've got a lot of different um, questions that came through about what's better, IUL, whole life, and I think it definitely depends on the scenario. And one thing I'm gonna send out today in, in the thank you email is this slide in particular to kind of talk about IUL sales opportunities. We've got a huge library of presentation material, videos, PowerPoints, uh, and so, of course, focusing on business owners, um, clients that want living benefits, of course, looking at the LSW products, that's a great fit. Um, clients that want downside protection with upside potential, looking at the floors in the IUL product is a great way. And, of course, RMDs, which uh, Mary covered, you know, looking at those IUL sales opportunities, these are all great places to start, <clears throat> whether you're going after an existing book or maybe using some of our lead programs, you can kind of tap into all those resources. One quick thing I did want to mention that I'll send a link out today is our microsite, which is iulexperience.com. This has everything from sales software to training material, consumer material, um, focusing on IUL and scholarship, but even kind of highlighting all of our carriers and products. It's really your one-stop shop for everything IUL. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is the sales software, which is phenomenal. You can actually run an illustration or have our marketing team do an illustration and create a custom client brochure and proposal that's specific to that actual client you're working with. Talks about uh, custom proposals, downside scenarios, and even kind of runs a, a worst case scenario to let them know how that IUL would perform. If you've ever sold from an IUL illustration, it's a little bit difficult. This software has helped agents write a lot more business in a much shorter period of time. Um, also, part of that IUL microsite includes the IUL and scholarship tab, of course. National Life Group is one of the participating carriers, so your clients can get up to one free year of college tuition. Uh, it doesn't cost them a penny, it doesn't cost you anything. Levinson actually covers the entire cost of the program. So if you're not using that scholarship program, it's a great way to uncover new leads and actually go back to all your existing clients and offer them this program at no additional cost. And, and it's gonna actually help you generate a lot more leads moving forward. So definitely take a look at that scholarship platform. Uh, before I turn it back to Bill here, the premium finance section of the website is pretty robust here. We've got all sorts of training materials, even a client-driven sales proposal system that walks them through every step of how premium finance actually works. We're seeing a huge resurgence of premium finance cases. We we're just chatting before the call. Uh, it's not uncommon to have these cases that are 120, 200, $300,000 of annualized premium. And we have the actual resources and the sales team to jump on the phone call with the client and help walk you through that premium finance sale. Everything start to finish, including uh, handling the funding for you. It's a very simplified process, especially now with a lot of death benefits that are non-met up to 5 million. So a lot of great resources in that section as well. Okay, Joe, and we are just about wrapped up here. Um, this was a podcast that you will see launching tomorrow, and it has to do exactly uh, with some of Mary Reed's strategies and opening doors to business owners. This is free software that, once again, Levinson offers that allows our agents to literally put in a zip code and the system will tell you about all of the local businesses in your area, how many employees they have, 
what products they're utilizing now to give you enough information to pick up the phone and set the appointment. So really, really cool. It's called Arisopedia. Um, we do have that available for you. And that podcast episode, another one that will knock your socks off. You'll see it launching tomorrow, and it will get you very, very comfortable with some of these concepts. Okay, these are our upcoming agent training events. Basically, every day of the week, we dive into a different technology platform. Uh, on the bottom there, on the 17th, that's the new Insure Now Direct and Haven Term Updates. That's like Amazon for insurance. All of our agents um, have access to their own free website where your client does everything from A to Z, all 100% direct to consumer, but you, the agent, still make full commissions. Okay, last slide in our question of the day, and of course, our Positive Tuesday quote, even though today happens to be Thursday, it's okay. Uh, we run this for the entire week. It is literally impossible to be grateful and stressed at the same time. I think we have so much to be thankful for right now. And that includes uh, literally waking up in the morning, right on, on the right side of the bed, right? Eyes open, feet on the ground. It's a great day, okay? We have to have gratitude. The rest will come. Um, with that said, I wanna ask our question of the day. Whoever answers first, get our Mary Read book series package. The question is, I named Mary Reed's first book that a lot of our agents give out to their prospects to set appointments. What is the name of that first book? As long as it's close, you win. Joe, do we have a winner? We do. Keith S. from Texas. Keith S., congratulations. The name of the book, How to Use the Tax Code to Get the IRS Out of your retirement. Congratulations, Keith. Sorry about the technical issues. Have a great Thursday, great rest of the week, good weekend, great holiday season, good selling, and thanks again.